Hello and welcome to a lesson in HIT and stretching. Um, in essence, obviously, if you're your first time user of this uh, presentation, just a reminder, any yellow text boxes refers to tasks for students to complete. Any green text boxes should be the students taking some notes. Any blue text boxes refer to differentiation tasks. Um, so thinking about how we can um, change up answering certain questions um, specifically for maybe for teachers and then obviously the red text box is this idea of teaching and learning strategies um, specifically to be used in the class um, for teacher purposes so what does the syllabus say um, specifically about um, this topic well in essence you need to know what hit refers to so high intensity interval training you need to know the meaning behind it and obviously the benefits and ultimately you need to know a little bit about stretching so specifically static stretching but I think at this stage um, it's important to know maybe the difference between static and dynamic stretching and be able to kind of apply um, and start to apply the concept of muscle contractions uh, so thinking about isometric contractions when we're talking about static stretching and isotonic muscle contractions when we're referring to dynamic stretching so as a quick starter, you can see on the right hand side there, you've got Joe Wicks, um, a sort of a, a home learning workout fitness guru. Um, and I want you, first of all, you've probably seen one of his sessions before, just want you to write down as many exercises you might find in a HIT workout program of his. OK, so I'll give you like 30 seconds and just write down as many exercises you can think of. Just pause the video there. OK, so in essence, you should have completed that task um, regarding Joe Wicks and you, and you hopefully came up with different examples such as burpees, such as running on the spot, um, heel flicks, for example, high knees, as you can see there in, uh, in the diagram on the right hand side. You may have even uh, mentioned things like squatting, lunges, um, all of those things that we're going to kind of talk about um, in this lesson. So in essence, first and foremost, when we're talking about high intensity interval training it is a type of interval training um, and in essence what is interval training remember it's those those periods of exercise followed by um, periods of rest and when we're looking at HIT in particular we're referring to sort of periods of high intensity intense exercise so working very hard with periods of rest or, or even sort of low in intense exercise as a recovery so again, just sort of pause your video here and just think about these tasks to maybe complete and thinking about what are the benefits of HIIT training, in your opinion, and which sports would, would use HIIT training and try to explain why they would use it. OK, so let's go through some of your answers, hopefully, in regards to sort of the benefits first and foremost and, and which sports may be required to use it. So in essence, obviously, interval training can be altered to see suit the need of, of any performer and all performers so that's one of the benefits and advantages of it really and the fact that you can do a HIIT training session at home in the luxury of your living room of your bedroom um, in a garden and so on means you mean you need kind of limited space really and if any equipment in essence um, ultimately this type of training so HIIT training can can focus on the anaerobic energy system and also the aerobic energy system so again that's a benefit in that it covers um, both types of systems obviously we can vary the length of the interval so we can change up how um, much we rest and, and how long we rest for depending on on the participant you can see there on the workout on the right hand side that you've got three different levels so we could do three sets of each um, exercise or we could if we want to challenge ourselves into level two we could do five sets of each exercise um, and someone who's heavily fit might might challenge themselves into uh, level three of seven sets of each exercise but but most importantly there it says sort of two minutes rest um, once we've completed um, that particular set um, the beauty of obviously hit training is that you can change up um, those high intense periods between anywhere between 10 and 60 seconds really so um, we can manipulate what we want to do and, and how uh, how long we want to do it for um, and for the low intense uh, for the recovery periods um, or for the or for in essence the lower intense periods um, 
that obviously improves our aerobic um, levels of fitness as well. Okay, so let's move on to the second um, type of training here where we've got plyometric. So um, this type of training, we're specifically looking at this idea of increasing power. So that strength time speed. So doing things quickly, um, but in a, in, a, in a way that's going to improve our, our power through kind of um, heavy weighted movements, perhaps. Um, if we're thinking about the body in particular, we might be looking at movements such as bounding, such as hopping, such as jumping. So this can involve sort of exercises like lunges, squat jumps, um, work with the medicine ball. Um, you'd have seen probably before sort of videos of, um, you know, press ups followed by sort of claps in between. Um, and even the use of sort of box jumps that, that are now quite, um, common in the gym so where we jump up onto the box and then we jump off the box as well and the aim of this really is to is to use our body weight and to use gravity and to and to kind of provide stress onto our muscles involved and, and we're going to look now in a second as to how um, that specifically is used in the box jump So let's move on to looking at how the box jump uh, works specifically. So you can see that on the right hand side, sort of athletes and, and individuals at the gym will be using these types of boxes, different heights, different uh, sizes and so on um, to explode upwards onto the actual box itself. So here we're looking at different types of muscle contractions, um, looking at eccentric, so when the muscle lengthens and concentric when the muscle shortens. Um, and in essence here, as it says, the, the athlete, once they've jumped onto the box, they'll jump off the box. And, and when they jump off the box here, um, the quadricep lengthens. So it's an eccentric contraction. And as they jump off the box, um, we kind of manipulate our body in a way. We manipulate our muscles and we get stored energy, elastic energy it's referred to as, um, whereby if we release it again, with a, an immediate further jump, um, we can we can kind of create extra energy, e extra explosion, um, and that kind of really kind of helps out with that um, explosive power in essence. So it says there the elastic energy, um, which then can be released through a further immediate jump. So the second jump back onto the box um, using that stored energy. Um, makes use of a stronger concentric contraction. So when we jump back on towards the box, that's when we're, um, that's when we're shortening our quadricep, our, our muscle contraction there. So in essence, basically we're kind of using that eccentric contraction um, to cause a stronger concentric um, contraction. So that's how we can obviously help um, improve our power. Again, here's a, an independent task for you to, to pause the video, think about what the benefits of plyometric training and which sporting athletes might use it and try and explain why. OK, so hopefully you answered those questions in regards to plyometrics. Um, you know, I think the beauty of it is obviously sports that require explosive power. So things like headering um in in rugby in a line out for example when we're jumping up to to catch that ball in a tip off in basketball um basketball players will definitely need sort of um, elements of plyometrics when they're kind of looking to to lay up and slam dunk and so on um and even things like in netball as well isn't it if you think of a goalkeeper um they'll they'll require obviously plyometrics to jump up and try, try and intercept the uh, the ball and, and the pass um, and even to make it difficult for the goal attack and the goal shooter when they're, when they're trying to shoot. Let's move on to static stretching, however. So here we're looking at an idea of, well, in essence, it's basically stretching where we're holding that movement. So isometrically, so there's um, no movement in our muscle contraction. Um, it's an excellent way, as it says there, to, to increase flexibility. And ultimately, why do we stretch? It's, you know, what the benefits are there at the bottom. Um, in essence, it's to, to, to provide that increased range of movements, isn't it? Yeah. Um, from a teacher point of view at this stage, um, I think it's important to, to make a note of, of trying to really 
distinguish between the two in regards to static and dynamic stretching um, with your students and as students I think it's important that you know the difference between the two so static stretching being without any movement dynamic stretching is where we have movement and moving on obviously in terms of other sort of benefits uh, obviously as I've said there it increases the range of uh, range of movement at a specific joint um, and the purpose of it well we we stretch obviously to, to reduce injury to prevent injury and ultimately we hold that stretch um, isometrically for about 30 seconds um, to really kind of ensure that, um, that stretch is, is fully completed um, we try to avoid overstretching we don't want to overstretch um, can, because that can obviously cause mus muscular strains um, and in essence we need to make sure that we've got, we use the right technique um, because obviously if we stretch with the incorrect technique then, then this can cause um, more damage than good. Takeaway from today's lesson, so, um, so ensure that you uh, look on class charts, you look at some of the worksheets that I've provided to be attached with this lesson and I'll be testing your learning in, in this topic and, and the previous topic that we looked at in regards to components of fitness. <clears throat> teachers obviously how can you um, engage your students in this particular topic um, I think I think it'd be really important to um, allow them to, to have a bit of a show and tell so what I mean by that is get them to design a hit session get them to, to hopefully if they can lead the learning in it could be in small groups they could be the PT they could be the Joe Wicks of that group of five students and if you've got the space in the classroom or if you've got the space where you can go into the gym then, then I think it's really important that you apply this theory um, and these kind of types of, of training into a practical setting and um, that's how you're going to embed that learning that's how you're going to embed that memory um, of this specific task For, from a differentiated point of view um, can you start to apply the the, the muscle groups um, the various muscle groups that that link in to uh, the syllabus um, and also the muscle contractions as we kind of talked about so um, you could you could uh, potentially put a few uh, images on the screen uh, like the one on the right hand side here so what is that individual looking to stretch can we label um, the different muscles that he's currently stretching um, is it an isometric contraction um, is it an isotonic contraction can that be labeled on there and also can we be even more specific with the the muscles that we've labeled um, is it at the moment lengthening is it shortening so we're looking at eccentric and concentric as well so um, using those keywords as much as possible to, to get students to label to identify um, is I think really important uh, when we're embedding uh, the knowledge into them at this stage Okay, best of luck. Hope it goes well and uh, thanks.